we are finally or tremi finally <laughs> on to our 31st international fame lover and she is third year zoology student yasmin samir our reigning queen of the nile or to use her proper title fame lab egypt's 2017 champion for those of you who got the program, she was meant to be in the first heat, but because of flights, couldn't make it in time, so everything's been shifted to give her some small opportunity to recover, even though she's only just got in today. Now, as well as her studies at Alexandria University, Yasmin's keen to share academic and scientific insights with young people, or other young people. To do this, she's taken part in science festivities, showing experiments to school children, and worked in the academic committee member at the Model UN Security Council, which is like the UN Security Council, only for 12 to 16 year olds. And now she's targeting a slightly older audience. I suppose you could say Fame Lab is a bit like a kind of science UN, but for a slightly older audience. Please welcome our well equipped Egypt champion, the last of our 31, Yasmin Samir. <laughs> Welcome, and let me introduce to you a magic scientific technique. But first, meet little Johnny, a nine years old man who is sitting there in the first row, but he has his epileptic seizure, which stopped him from continuing. What is this? A seizure happens when a group of neurons in a certain brain area starting firing and being hyperactive, sending electrical charge in a very high rate in a very short time, which causes the seizure. If we could manipulate this hyperactivity and stop it, then we could solve the seizure. And that's what scientist Francis Crick proposed in 1999, and was a flame of a technique called optogenetics. To understand more this technique, we must study the nature of this algae which mainly live in bond and become attractive to light because it has an organelle on its surface called eye spot. This eye spot absorbs certain wavelengths and opens the gates to allow the passage of charged particles in and out. It's mainly controlled by light. So we need our neurons to act in the presence of light like this algae. And to do so, we're going to steal the gene responsible for this character and give it to a secret agent that we hired and chosen by ourselves. And this secret agent is a certain type of viruses. But before we give him the gene, we must give him three strict commands. Do not cause diseases. Do not be caught by immune system. You must go and deliver the gene to selected neurons only without affecting other brain area. And then we will give him the gene and inject it to the brain. <coughs> and then we will see how the neurons will act after implanting an optic fiber. Scientists noticed two different things. Neurons will absorb blue light and then express a protein called channel rhodopsin, which allows only positive charges in and then the firing rate will be continued. Or it will absorb only orange light and express a protein called halorhodopsin, allowing negative charges in, and the firing rate will be stopped. By this technique, scientists could, uh, scientists could stop the seizure in a group of mice in an area called the cerebellum, which is responsible in making the, and in controlling the contraction muscles in both animals and mice. Maybe after the widespread of clinical trials, maybe our little Johnny could, con con could complete the whole show. Thank you. Um, Yasmin, do you, do you give that presentation to schools or is that, is that a one that you prepared uh, for us? I give it to my today? nephew. <laughs> you give it to your nephew. And what age, is, what age are they? Uh, like 11 and 6. And they, they understand and they... Uh, they were just focused with little Johnny. Very good. <laughs> Excellent. Very good. Very good. Okay. What have you learned about science communication working with children? Where? 
What have you learned about science uh, communication? Yeah, in the Pipe with Deca Alexandrina, in the science festivity, we were allowed to make uh, like this show, but for school students. So we must deliver uh, the topic in a very short time, and we used only props and li someone like this. Yeah, they're good props. <laughs> And um, in your future science communication will be a big part or research also will be... I didn't get it. So your, so the part of the science communication in your life uh -huh. uh, in, the f in, the, in the near future will be uh, a big part or do you think... Uh, uh, I think the problem always and the boundary between anyone uh, work in the science field and the public that we don't know, uh, we forgot the state of the unknowing. Like if we have a children and told him that one plus one equal two and he doesn't, doesn't get it, we just say it's one plus one equal two, how you don't get it? We just forgot the, the state of the unknowing. When we reach this with our knowledge, then we can communicate in science. So I just want to continue as this way. And this, t talking about the research, at the moment it's at the, this is being done on mice, is it? So how yeah. far may we ha have to wait human trials maybe? Uh, human trials must be uh, applicable after making sure that implanting an optic fiber in the cranium, it's a dangerous thing. So you must study how to not me being uh, to like make an incision in, in the cranium, it's a dangerous. And making also wavelengths like using blue light in a very high rate could, uh, you, uh, could cause burning to the cells. So you must make like a point mutation in the gene to make it more uh, excited in a very little amount of light. So mm -hmm. all these uh, cases must be in, um, like calculated before getting into clinical trials. Okay, new light on neurons from Egypt's main emissary, <laughs> Yasmin Samir.